everyone. Today we're going to go ahead and talk about teaching addition in kindergarten. When we are talking about teaching addition to our youngest learners who kind of just developed their number sense, I like to do it in five simple steps. So I'm going to walk through each step and give you some ideas and activities for each of these steps to help you help your kindergartners become proficient in addition. In case you're new here, my name is Susan Jones. I am a former K through two literacy teacher as well as first grade teacher who now spends a lot of time here on YouTube sharing tips and ideas with teachers just like you. So let's get started. All right, step number one when teaching your kindergarten students addition is to provide explicit teaching about what addition really is, how to do it, and also to make sure they already have that number sense knowledge. I mentioned this at the beginning of the video, but you wanna introduce addition when your students already have a firm grasp on number sense. They should really be able to identify and understand what the numbers zero through 10 mean and represent. If you need help with that, I do have a great hands-on number sense unit that looks like this over on TPT. I will link that down in the description for you to check out. So assuming students have a strong number sense knowledge already, you will want to explicitly explain what addition is. You'll want to use some sort of anchor chart. Here's a little example where I have four teal cubes plus two orange cubes equals six. And I here explain that addition means to join together. When you are showing this with your students, you will want to use things like cubes, things like counters. You'll want students to stand up and get in groups. And you'll want to just keep adding things together. You'll explain to them, here I have one, two, three, four, five purple cubes plus two green cubes. When I join them together, I add them together. I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Now I'm very purposeful about the words that I am using. I'm saying join, I'm saying add. I can say things like, wow, I noticed when I added these five purple cubes to these two green cubes, I now have more cubes. When using other examples, like here I have four students with curly hair, plus three students with hair in a ponytail. When I add them together, I now have a sum of seven. I'm sure to show these examples with manipulatives, illustrations, by drawing pictures, using students. I do it very purposefully and I make sure that I'm using words like add, together, join, sum, and equals. Again, I really wanna make sure that I am getting students used to this idea of taking two separate parts, putting them together, joining them together to create more. And using this terminology allows my students to hear it often so they are aware of it. And again, I will explicitly teach what each of these words means throughout the unit. All right, step number two is to have students use manipulatives. After they have seen you explain what addition is, they've seen you do it a couple times, it's now their turn to practice. Now, when I have students practice this type of guided practice activity, I like to put something like this up on the board here, and underneath it, I write the sentence frame, blank plus blank equals blank. Now to get students started, I would give them a bunch of manipulatives over at their table, maybe some counting bears, maybe some cubes, but you'd wanna try, or buttons, whatever you have, and you would ask them, okay, everybody take three purple bears plus two yellow bears, and what does that equal? Three plus two equals five. And the students would practice, you know, taking three of the purple, two of the yellow, and they would use that sentence. You'll wanna guide students through a few of these so they can practice taking different manipulatives, all within sums of 10, adding them together with something tangible. These tangible manipulatives allow students to really see addition taking place in front of them. Instead of just thinking about the numbers three and two, they are noticing that three is here, two is here. When they put them together, they have more they have five. Now, once students have done this a few times with you and they've practiced, you know, putting the different parts together, saying those sentences, you'll want students to practice this on their own. And a simple way to do this is have students take five red cubes and five blue cubes or any two different colors, put them in a bag, and then they will go ahead and close their eyes and they will practice taking out, let's start with four. They'll take out four different ones, separate them by color, and then they'll say to you, two blue cubes plus two red cubes equals four cubes. 
then they can put the cubes back and their partner can try it too. So they can go back and forth saying it aloud a few times, and then if they are ready, they can actually record it on a piece of paper by actually writing two plus two equals four. So I hope you saw that within this step of using manipulatives, there's actually some sequential order going on. First, they're doing it with guided practice where you are telling them what two parts to add and they will say it in a sentence. Then they can do it independently by using something like a bag where they are pulling out different colors, adding them together and saying it. And then that third step is for them to actually write it down using an equation. Once students feel comfortable with that, then they're ready for step three. Okay, so once your students are comfortable adding two things together, two parts to make a whole, maybe they've done this a few times and they're able to write down equations, then you wanna go to step number three, which is all about decomposing numbers. The Common Core Standards want students in kindergarten to be able to take any number that is 10 or less and figure out a few different ways that number is composed. So they want students to know that the number six can be made by adding five plus one. It can also be made by adding three plus three. There are many different ways you can make that number. One of my favorite activities for this is to play Magic Bag Edition, and it looks a little like this. Similar to what I said earlier, this game, students will go ahead and put a bunch of red and blue cubes, or you can choose any two different colors, into a bag. But here, students are going to pick a number card so they know exactly what number they're going to pick up. They will go ahead, close their eyes, reach into the bag, and pull out that target number. So here the number is six. They will go ahead and pull out six different cubes, and when they do, they will sort it on their map. They'll put the blue ones here, then they'll put the red ones here as they are sorting and pulling those cubes. Then they will go ahead and kind of make this little number train so they can see how the number six was made. In the first case here, it was made with three blue cubes and three red cubes. Then they'll leave those cubes there and they will do it again. Close their eyes, put their hand in a bag, and they will pull out six more cubes. Again, they will sort them as they pull and then create that little train. Here they can visually see two different ways to make the number six. They have three blue plus three red, and then four blue plus two red. Both of those equal the number six. Again, taking it that one step further, I do like them to use this little recording sheet here where they will color in the number train and they will go ahead and write the equation of the two different ways to make the number six. After they've done it with one number, they can take all the cubes, put it back in the bag and pick a new target number. When we teach our students to decompose different numbers, we're teaching them a lot of value and relationships with these different numbers. For instance, when they're thinking about the number 10, they'll be able to recognize that 10 isn't just made up of 10 single units, one plus one plus one plus one, et cetera, all the way to 10. Instead, 10 could be represented of eight plus two, six plus four, five plus five. It can be all these different parts to make the number 10. Teaching students these decomposing skills will help them later on as they try to decompose numbers in that are two digits, three digits. They'll soon get to see that 15 is 10 and a five, and 27 is 20 or 10, 10 and a seven. They'll again get to see all these different relationships that their numbers have. Step number four. All right, on to step number four, and step number four is repetition is key. So far, you have introduced what addition is with your students. You showed them how to do it, and you gave them lots of practice with things like manipulatives. They were able to practice that many times, and then they learned about decomposing numbers. Now, your students are kind of in repetition mode. You want them to continue building these skills so they can get to mastery. To do this, you'll wanna provide them lots of different opportunities to keep adding and learning about decomposing numbers. Here's an example of an activity of a little picture sort here. So instead of students going ahead and decomposing cubes, here it's just a simple sort where they have numbers two through 10 and they will need to look at different ways, different images and pictures to make that number. After they've gone ahead and sorted it, there's a little recording sheet where they can record the different equations to go ahead and make those numbers. Just like any skill and new thing that students are learning, you'll want them to practice it in many different ways. So find a fun activity or game that you like with your students and switch it up. With those manipulatives, don't just use cubes or teddy bears. Grab something else to use. 
Make it seasonal, make it fun. Another fun way to have students practice this repetition of addition and to get them working towards mastery is through step number five. All right, step number five is all about games. In our last step, when we talked about repetition, we wanted our students to build mastery with those addition concepts. But realistically, by the end of kindergarten, we want our students to be fluent with their addition facts within five. Now, when students are fluent with addition, that means they're not using manipulatives anymore. They're able to see two plus two equals four. 3 plus 1 equals 4, 0 plus 2 equals 2, etc. Without having to use their fingers or really have to add up anything, they've just practiced it so many times through your other steps that they now know it like that. A simple way I have to love my students progress towards this fluency is through print and play edition games. Now these print and play edition games are a whole lot of fun. I made these for first grade forever ago, about three, four years ago at this point, and I decided to make an additional pack with kindergarten skills. So these are all specifically designed for kindergarten edition skills, and they are meant to be played as partner games, but they can also be played independently. When we were creating these games, I wanted to make sure, especially right now in the times of COVID that these games could be put to use independently as well. Each game is in black and white and all you need are some simple things you have in your classroom like dice or maybe paper clips for a spinner and students will get to play all sorts of different games to work on their fluency. So there you have it. Those are five easy steps to help your students on their way to mastering addition. And because you made it this far in the video, I do want to offer you one of those print and play addition games entirely free. So I'm going to have that listed down in the description below. The magic bag addition activity I shared earlier in this video is one that's in my hands-on addition unit. So as you can tell through the steps, we like to keep math pretty hands-on until they have mastered a good part of it or they're ready to practice their fluency, which is where we then move to print and play games. So I do have a hands-on kindergarten edition unit I'll link in the description, as well as the addition print and play games. I actually have a unit for number sense, addition, subtraction, and other ones that are still built out specifically made for kindergarten so I will link that down below but your free game is also down there I hope you enjoyed this video and grabbed a few tips for teaching addition in kindergarten if you have any other math skills you want me to make a video about to share ideas tips tricks anything drop it down in the comments so I can see and maybe I will be able to make a video just for you as always be sure you are subscribed to my channel and click that bell that way you're notified of all my new videos see you next time bye